This is Mike from Forward Observer. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for watching. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some new indicators that I'm looking for in the next phase of conflict and collapse. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, then you should know that I'm not particularly optimistic about the future of this country as we know it today. In previous videos going back to 2019, I've talked about the culture war and the class war as being central to understanding the ongoing domestic conflict. My conclusion and main thesis is that the quote-unquote civil war has already started. We are just at the phase of low-intensity conflict. Today, I am finally going to discuss intra-elite conflict and what that indicates for the future of the United States. Now, in my last video, I discussed the importance of social cohesion and pointed out several historians and philosophers who arrived at the same conclusion. When social cohesion is eroded, states begin to fail, and empires begin to fall. And I really recommend that you go back and watch that video. I've linked it in the description below before moving on in this series. Now, in his book, Revolution and Rebellion in the Modern World, historian Jack Goldman points out that population growth leads to social instability through price inflation, falling wages, higher unemployment, an increase in the number of landless peasants, a greater number of citizens vying for elite positions, disruptive internal migration that affects both rural and urban areas, increases in food riots and wage protests, and competition and factionalism among elites. Professor Peter Turchin, in his book Historical Dynamics, summarizes Goldman's conclusion. He writes, quote, The end result is state bankruptcy and consequent loss of military control, elite movements of regional and national rebellion, and a combination of elite mobilized and popular uprisings that manifest the breakdown of central authority. It sounds a lot like what we're seeing today. Now, interestingly, Turchin covers Goldman's work on the Chinese dynastic cycle, which might be of some use to us. According to Goldman, younger dynasties tended to have peace and prosperity, while older dynasties tended to suffer from greater societal disorder. And this sounds a lot like Sir John Glubb's fate of empires, right? But this actually gets way more interesting. The cause of societal breakdown of China's dynasties was the development and interaction among three classes, peasants, bandits, and the elites. And as Turchin explains, quote, peasants grow food and pay taxes, bandits steal food and fight peasants and rulers, and self-interested rulers tax farmers and hunt the bandits. Historical research published in 1994 showed that as the population of these dynasties grew, more peasants turned to banditry. And this is described as an occupational decision as peasants decided which had greater utility to them. Do they continue to farm and remain in poverty and still pay taxes, or do they become bandits? And this led to fewer peasants, lower food production, which led to further increases to the bandit class. Turchin concludes, quote, At some point, the bandit power overwhelms that of the government and the dynasty collapses. Goldman's research arrives at a different conclusion. It's not popular uprising and rebellion that topples governments. State collapse happens during periods of intra-elite conflict, when the factionalized elites are helping to foment popular uprisings and rebellions. Turchin points out that this quote-unquote occupational choice should really be applied to competing elites. So our intra-elite model actually looks something like this. In vying for control, which elites side with the peasants and which elites side with the bandits to gain control over the entire triangle. Now, in today's case, conservatives are members of the peasant class. I know many won't agree with that, but there's a good chance that you are a producer who pays taxes. Bandits don't produce anything and they don't pay taxes. So what does this sound like? Through legal plunder and the expanded welfare state, the progressives are the bandits and our ruling class is the elite. I think 2016 and the politics that followed showed that there actually is intra-elite competition. And I think this is somewhat of a new development against the backdrop of our ongoing low-intensity conflict. And I'm willing to bet that the 2024 presidential election is just a continuation of what started in 2016. The bottom line here is that if this understanding is correct, 
then according to large bodies of research, this is actually what leads to state collapse, intra-elite conflict. The establishment elites and the dissident elites, or the anti-elites, mobilizing their bases of contemporary peasants and bandits to compete for control over excess luxury, which in today's case is government power and the U.S. financial system. According to Goldman's theories on state collapse, this entire process, from state creation to state collapse, plays out over a time period between one and three centuries. And that sounds a lot like the fate of empires, in which Sir John Glubb identifies that empires have a lifespan of roughly 250 years. Now, to end this video, I want to look at one instance where these factors led to war. Goldman's research led him to find relationships between population growth and social instability. And we're going to specifically look at how England saw these factors play out in the lead-up to the outbreak of the English Civil War in the 1640s. Now, between the year 1500 and 1640, the population of England doubled. The landless peasant class grew from 11% of the country to 40% of the country by 1620. Over the same period, grain prices had increased by 600%. Now, at the same time, state finances deteriorated significantly to the point where the crown had to sell off land and possessions, take out loans, and essentially beg to be bailed out by the elites. So what we end up with is a financial crisis, plus factionalism and competition among elites, plus disaffected landless peasants and commoners who were mobilized by elites, and this all results in the English Civil War. Is there a lesson to be learned here? If you enjoy my videos, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, leave a comment below if you want me to continue making these videos because history can teach us a lot about the future if we just pay attention. That does it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be well and stay out front.